Hello, everyone. Welcome to Take the Black Live, the only show on the internet that Queen Elizabeth II named as her favorite online program about dragons and lasers. That's not true. She didn't say anything about that. I am Dan Selke, editor of winneriscoming.net. I am here with Mia Johnson of dorksheadoftheforce.com. Mia Johnson, dorksheadoftheforce.com. How are you finding this Wednesday in Chicago land? You know, not too shabby. A lot of good stuff going on. It's a bright, sunny day. I cannot complain. It's a bright, sunny day, but it's a but it's a bright, cold, sunny day. But you know, um, you take the good with the bad, and eventually <laughs> exactly. you get through it. And today we have some juicy topics to talk about, as always, talking about all things TV, movies, books, sci-fi, fantasy. And if you want to hear us in podcast form, we are available on you know iTunes, Google Play, wherever podcasts are available. And let's get right into it. Um, Mia, we're going to cover some, some, some classic big hitters, some classic big fantasy big hitters today. Ooh. We got some Song of Fire Game of Thrones stuff. We got some Lord of the Rings stuff. We got some Wheel of Time stuff. This week is kind of a, the return to the epic fantasy that, frankly, I kind of grew up on and is very near and dear <laughs> to my heart. Like Sort of like this style of story. First yeah. up, um, there was a new interview with uh, James Hibbert, who was the entertainment weekly journalist who for years like since its beginning covered game of thrones by like going to the set talking to the people talking to the actors talking to the producers talking to george R. R. martin importantly mm -hmm. um and just getting like if, if he knows the show more intimately than probably any other journalist alive including me much to my chagrin he's also a very <laughs> nice person <laughs> and uh, he did an interview with Los Guerreros, a Spanish language Game of Thrones site. And he had some cool things to say about sort of um, where George R.R. R. Martin's work is going as opposed to where Game of Thrones went. I guess, you know, to, to recap it for the one person you might not know, <laughs> fans have been in a holding pattern for almost a decade now where George R.R. R. Martin published A Dance of Dragons, the last time was a fire book in 2011, which was again, a decade ago and i've uh, been waiting on the winds of winter ever since it spanned the entirety of the television program <laughs> and, the, and a new book did not come out uh we all hope for the best but now that we all know how the show ends there has been this question of will the any of the books be different and i think you know i mean the, the obvious answer is yes i mean there's obviously gonna be some things that are different because there are some things that just weren't included in the show at all that are going to be mm -hmm. in the books but you know how much and Hibbard had some interesting comments on it, and I'd like to read yeah. them to you now. And uh, yeah, if anybody out there watching on YouTube or Facebook has any comments on any of this, feel, feel free to uh, drop them in the chat and we'll get back to you. Okay, this is Entertainment Weekly's own James Hibbard talking about what Martin told him when he talked to him for this book <laughs> he made, uh, Fire Cannot Kill a Dragon, the untold story behind uh, Game of Thrones. It was a really good right. book. We talked about it earlier. I should have brought it with me, shouldn't I have? Oh, too late. Um, anyway, he talked about, you know, how in the end, even if Martin had finished the books, the show would have been extremely different because there was so much that had been cut. Like, there are big characters that are cut. There's like Arianne Martellus cut, Lady Stonehearts cut, lots of other stuff. And he went on to say, it's particularly difficult for Martin to discuss the show's latter seasons because he has his own very different versions of certain events coming in the books. He surprised me by giving me one example on the record that I included in the book. That's uh, how Hodor's death will be different. He also told me a few things coming that were off the record. And let's just say, I cannot wait to read The Winds of Winter. So he didn't say, you know, this is how it's different uh -huh. in this one, you know, uh, Daenerys marries Arya and then they battle Darth Maul together. He didn't give that away, but it's probably <laughs> what's going to happen. And I guess the question is now, I mean, we all knew that it was always going to be different. The question for me is how different? Right. Um, what do you think, Mia? It, like, well, let me ask you this question. Like, now that you've seen the end of Game of Thrones, uh -huh. I'm not sure if you're like a, a an epic fantasy reader person, but does that story appeal to you in written form? Like, would you consider oh, reading a song by some fire? Different. Does it appeal to you at all? Maybe. Ooh. It seems like such a grand marathon that it might be worth one day. You know, people are always like, you know, I'm going to run that 28, 26 miles. And I'm like, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to read that series. <laughs> Maybe one day. I do want to <laughs> ask because 
Hibbert says that Hodor's death will be different in the book. So has that not even been written into the the text yet? No, he's almost at that point. Like that's about oh, where it leaves off. Wow. Like, yeah, that, that's how far back <laughs> we are. Okay, yeah, because I was like, that feels like ages ago just for like a it casual does. viewer. <laughs> I mean, technically, uh, it was the sixth season, and mm-hmm. there were six, seven, eight, and then the show's yeah. over. I feel like it's it's not as far back as it feels, but yeah, it's a while back, and that's where he left off. He left off wow. with Jon Snow being killed. Remember that moment everyone was talking okay. about? Yeah. Where um, <laughs> he got killed, and everyone was like, is Jon Snow coming back? Blah, 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 blah. But yeah, he talked about um, how Hodor's Hoda- will be different, how it's um, hold the door isn't as literal in his version. And that's just one thing, but there'll be other things that'll be very, very different um, indeed. As we, one of our commenters says, yeah. which is a, a very common uh, um, sentiment, Jake <laughs> Baker, GOT will have an ending. A Song of Ice and Fire will never be finished, unfortunately. Now that is the, the, the pessimist viewpoint on it. <laughs> I mean, I can't say it's an unreasonable viewpoint. Yeah. Um, Personally, I'm I'm pretty sure we'll get the Winds of Winter. I am less convinced about the final book, A Dream of Spring, mm. but um, we'll 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 see. Yeah, I, I would bet good money we'll get the next one. The one after that, I don't know. Gosh, yeah, yeah. I'm I have good faith. It does sound like he's doing what he needs to do, and um, yeah, it does make it interesting how it really depends on how much this is going to deviate from the book. And how, um, sorry, I get distracted. There's people outside. Wow. <laughs> but, um, you know, how, how much he, what am I trying to say? How much he's going to include that's not in the show? Because I really, really like this show. So I guess for me, it's, I need to be able to discern, you know, is what he's adding extra going to be just as good or if not better? Because I already kind of like the baseline that they set for the show, maybe plus or minus mm-hmm. the final, you know, plot of episode eight. So I'm like, oh, sure. Those are the kind of things that I have to balance, basically. I mean, I think like the big question is like the, the very ending, because now we know that Daenerys goes homicidal and kills everybody. <laughs> um, Jon Snow kills her and Bran Stark becomes king. I bet those things will more or less happen, but I'm betting probably not in the way that we're, that we're kind of yeah. depicted on the show it, it, is what I'm guessing. Because everyone yeah. was so up in arms about, like, personally, this is rehashed stuff from a year ago, but still, we're talking about so I will. Like, I had no problem with Daenerys burning the city down. I thought that was kind of a, a I mean, like, if you sell that turn to me, great, good mm-hmm. on you. I don't think they quite sold it. So I think with just more lead time, yeah. that would probably work. And I think that's what he'll give us is more lead time. Oh yeah, yeah. There's a lot of gaps and and blanks that you can fill in. And if it's a you know a writer like a fantasy writer like George R. R. Martin, it's really like you know he's gonna elaborate on it and tell you That's all the little does. small people who were there and what this person was doing on the side. So that should be interesting. And it, it kind of made me think about how you know when people now when they react and see something they don't like, they're like, let's rewrite the canon. Let's just remake the whole movie. So it's People kind of doing that, don't they? It, yeah, it will be interesting if the exact turn of events happen in his book from season eight, but they they come to that conclusion a much different or perhaps satisfying way to the point where it's like, oh, well, maybe we don't need to rewrite the entire thing. It was just, you know, getting these extra bit of details filled in. Not that it wasn't satisfying to watch. I'm just betting it'll go at a slower, more deliberate pace where you kind mm-hmm. of see all the dominoes being set up yeah whereas on the show i feel like they skip some dominoes <laughs> right it's yeah. like oh you missed that one and then oh you did so it's like it didn't fall completely perfectly but like the formation is the same is this metaphor working i think it is yeah, but like yeah. they're arranged in the same shape but there'll be more of them <laughs> yeah like, i think I'm we're on the same that. page as jackie says did not like season eight ending not an, again not uncommon at all um, as Julie says, unless he, the big unless the big holdup is he's writing both books, <laughs> I would be very shocked. That is a another kind of common ish um, theory, but I I just doubt it. Just mm. based on what he's everything he said over the years, it doesn't it doesn't seem likely. He's just that slow. That's it. Yeah. That, that that that's the answer here. Um, but yeah, curious. I I hold out hope. 
um, for a while longer. We'll see. Hopefully this year we'll at least get an announcement. You fingers. know what is kind of, this isn't an awful thought, but it kind of makes me wonder when you do hit a slow patch in your writing career, it's kind of like, mm. do you feel motivated to write it? Are you still passionate? Do you think he's still passionate about this or is he hit like a I slow point? I think based on, I mean, and remember, like I'm a guy who just reports on this fairly oh, yeah. often. It seems to me it's kind of become like, it's more of a sense of duty he's running it out mm-hmm. of. Like, I think the pressure has gotten to the point where it's not particularly fun for him anymore, but he he does want to do it and he will do it. But it's more because like, I pushed the boulder up the hill this far. <laughs> I'm going to push it all the way up, Aww. even though it's it, it's been a while since the act of boulder pushing was really um, a gas <laughs> oh gosh, I mean, okay. Martinology is 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 a rich field of study that we can get into a lot <laughs> if you really wanted to. But let's no, move on before we yeah, dive deep let's... down the hole. Will he die first? You know, that's that's the question, Christian. I mean, he seems in pretty good health. Joe Biden just became president, and he's like a thousand. So Martin's younger than him. I don't see why not. If Joe Biden can be president at seventy eight, Martin should be able to finish a book at what is he? Is he hit seventy yet? I think he might have at 72 there you go okay he's, yeah, he's four yeah. he's four years younger than the president and the new president he's got a sharp mind <laughs> <laughs> so we'll see what happens um anyway other game of thrones news i i was enjoying this gwendolyn christie who is um uh, i'm sorry okay game of thrones veteran and <laughs> actual fairy queen gwendolyn yes. christie got um a new role that i'm looking forward to a lot Played Brienne on the show, of course. Very, very talented. That dress still kind of... Um, oh I just kind of look at it sometimes and just go, how does that happen? It's from um, the planet. It's unreal. <laughs> it's great. But yeah, she yeah. has gotten a role in The Sandman on Netflix, which is a show they're making with um, Neil Gaiman behind it. You ever read The Sandman uh, graphic? You ever read The Sandman comics? I have not. I, I have not read any of his work. But I know people talk a They're lot so good. about it. Yeah. They're amazing. I love them. They're kind of this um, trippy uh, fantasy exploration of mythology and religion and just pure imagination. They're really, really <laughs> out there and uh, varied in terms of their tone. They kind of go all over the place. There's like standalone stuff. There's longer form stuff. It it, 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 it seems like a really good basis for a show, honestly. Mm-hmm. Um, Are you ta- you're talking about just Sandman as a whole, not like his the Sandman, whole breath of yeah. War- wow, really? Oh, oh, I mean, like, he's good in general. Like, Gaiman uh-huh. is good. American Gods is good. He, he does good stuff. Yeah. Sandman, though, is terrific. And I've, I've wanted it to be a show for a while. And i just happy that Gwendolyn Christie is there because she is so perfect <laughs> for that kind of, like, dreamy thing Gaiman has going on. Yeah. Especially this show in particular, Sandman in particular, is all about sort of um, very high concept exploration of big ideas like dream and desire and death and all this kind of crap. And it takes a, a, a person of her sort of screen presence to kind of bring that out. I can see her working very well in that show. Oh, yeah. And also it means she'll be in more red carpets and wear more um, stuff that her Martian designers mock up for her. <laughs> Oh, I would love that. Yeah, I love her. She's got a great, just a great presence about her. And I don't know, I just, I I love everything about her. So I'll take your word that this role is perfect. Or like, even if they haven't announced the role, if it just seems like a good fit for her overall, I'm I'm down for it. It does. There are lots of she could play in it. Again, it's a series where like people like turn to other people. It's it's, it's very cool. And she could totally Uh do it. She'd be perfect for it. And I'm looking forward to it. But that's all we know. Like, we don't really know anything about when the show's coming. Well, it's in production or is going to production and it's one of my like a uh, big anticipated ones is all i'll say nice. about it and hopefully we can talk about it more soon Woo-hoo. but beyond that we have other big epic fantasy news coming down um amazon just released a description the official synopses for its wildly expensive billion dollar lord of the ring show this is the one where they i think spent 500 mil to get the rights alone wow. from the Tolkien estate. And there's been another 500 mil to like make the first two to five seasons. They're going all in on this. 
Now, wow. Lord of the Rings, obviously, very, very famous, very, very influential. Elves, dwarves, talking tree people, wizards, etc. hobbits. Everybody knows it, right? The Ring. Did you see oh, the yeah. movies or read the books? I have seen the movies, yeah. yeah. Both, yeah, The Hobbit and Ring, Lord of the Rings. <laughs> exactly. And um, yeah, this show was always a bit of a, a question mark because like the movies are, are pretty widely beloved and not oh, that old. So it's like, yeah. I don't know, do, do you want to do that again? Um, and we've known for a while, it's basically going to be the prequel. Um, but the nice thing about Lord of the Rings is the invented history is so long that like uh-huh. the prequel is set literally thousands of years beforehand. Jeez. And Tolkien wrote about that stuff. <laughs> I'll just wow. read the description yeah, briefly go. and see and see what, what feelings it elicits. <clears throat> Amazon Studios' forthcoming series brings to screens for the very first time the heroic legends of the fabled Second Age of Middle Earth's history. This epic drama is set thousands of years before the events of J.R.R. Tolkien's The Hobbit and The Lord of the Rings, and will take the U.S. back to an era in which great powers were forged, kingdoms rose to glory and fell to ruin, unlikely heroes were tested, hope hung by the finest of threads, and the greatest villain that ever flowed from Tolkien's pen threatened to cover all the world in darkness. Beginning in a time of relative peace, the series follows an ensemble cast of characters, both familiar and new, as they confront the long-feared reemergence of evil to Middle-earth. From the darkest depths of the Misty Mountains to the majestic forests of the elf capital of Linden, to the breathtaking island kingdom of Numenor, to the furthest reaches of the map, these kingdoms and characters will carve out legacies that live on long after they are gone. And that is going to be the Lord of the Rings show, the second oh. age of Middle Earth. Mia, are you familiar at all with sort of uh, Tolkien's back mythology? You know, I'm there's not a lot pret- of it. Huh? Yeah, I'm not going to pretend like I do. <laughs> okay, real quick. So this is a really quick primer on kind of a dorky Tolkien stuff. So <laughs> the whole of Lord of the Rings takes place in the third age of Middle Earth, which is kind of like, um, it's the third age. There were two other ages. We didn't see them in the third age. It's going to happen here. Got it. Um, the other two ages were, he, he writes about them in the appendices and in a book called The Silmarillion, which he wrote uh, posthumously published by his son. Mm-hmm. Um, and they're kind of more high magical, like the elves are doing more stuff. Sauron was more powerful back then. Sauron, right? Big old ring yeah, man. Yeah. Uh, the second age is when Sauron is like making the rings, making the rings of power. Oh. And there's a lot of like uh kind of uh it's sort of like the, what the roman empire is to us is like the second age is to frodo and company in in uh-huh. the hobbit and lord of the rings um it's good stuff the, the only problem with this kind of show is like there's no story like lord of the rings like he he wrote about the second age the way you write about like you know a history of the Roman Empire. Uh, it's okay. not like we're going to follow these characters and he wrote it all out like he did with Frodo. They're going to have to make a lot up and they have a, a very big cast. So are you interested in this? Does this, this spark any joy in you? <laughs> um, you know, I still have my feelings about fantasy. I really did like Lord of the Rings though when I watched it a couple of years back. So I did like that. Um, it really does... It, now that you say like there's no like actual story to this it strikes me as one of those things where they really have to have a dedicated team that oh yeah you know is is committed to the characters is committed to the lore um and all that yeah that being said yeah (laughs) basically yeah get you on board you seem you sound like you know what you're talking about (laughs) i read the summer the summer was boring but i read it (laughs) oh my goodness i commend you for that um but yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I didn't know that it was going to take place like a thousand years before. It almost oh, does sound like this whole concept that we talked about, like with the Star Wars thing, you know, like starting from scratch mm-hmm. with the books that they have and then just creating this whole, you know, basically world and, and stories from scratch. So if Star Wars can do it. I think the people over at, was it Amazon Studios? I think they can mm-hmm. pull it off too. Well, I mean, can Star Wars do it? The jury's still out on that one. I mean, that they haven't really... uh debuted that i all we, we all i always say like disney but it's basically kind of done no wrong when it comes to <laughs> well star wars did some wrong with didn't they okay yeah. um the jury's out i mean frankly amazon has made some good stuff the boys was definitely a hit um yeah. 
The Marvelous Mrs. Maisel was definitely a hit. This is on like another level. Like this is their ploy to have a Game of Thrones size hit. Like oh, yeah. Jeff Bezos has that famous quote from a while back. And by the way, Julie, if, if you're clapping at my rendition, I thank you very much. Um, where he told his kind of uh, video people, like, bring me a Game of Thrones. Mm-hmm. Like back when it was like the biggest thing in the world. Um, this is that. This is their attempt to do something like that and to have like a giant fantasy hit on that level. And it is a risk because you don't have like a really robust text to work from. They will mm-hmm. have to rely on their ingenuity, which could be beautiful yeah. or yeah. it could be, um, I mean, it could be a disaster. We don't know yet. Yeah, I don't think it's, well, yeah, this is hard to say. Cause I was gonna say it doesn't sound as hard as it sounds. Even if there's not a story, it might, you know, it might be liberating to be like, well, I can do whatever I want. All I have to do is just take from these characters, you know, that that's kind of like an adapter's job in kind of any medium. Um, gosh, what was I yeah, watching when someone had said that? It might have been like Ma Rainey's Black Bottom, like the director or something uh-huh. like that, you know, just like being inspired by the text and then doing what you can from your own creative sure. ideals. Um, so it could be quite easy for the creative people out there if not if you're if you are that person who's like who's like i you know i just i need to follow the roadmap i need something you know maybe that's not the person to bring on for the story in the first place exactly it's it's really quite similar to what hbo is doing with house of the dragon the game of thrones prequel Mm -hmm. where like there is a source text but it's it's not like a story the way a song of ice and fire was (laughs) where it's like here's what they said next and here's where they went here's what they talked here's what they did it's well, more like a long overview of kind of the big stuff that happened. Yeah. And you're going to have to like fill in the little details that really make it work. Exactly. And, um, and those shows will like be competing, basically. It'll be like mm-hmm. Lord of the Rings versus House of the Dragon versus the next epic fan show we'll talk about in just a second here, which are all going to be in the air at the same time. Ooh, that's a good question. Can we sustain all this? Let's mm-hmm. hit the, the, the third and final one <laughs> yeah, and, and then we can talk about that. So uh, not content, and uh, thank you, Julie. I didn't practice in the mirror for an hour <laughs> at all. Um, the third and final, uh, okay. <clears throat> not content to just have $1 billion fantasy series uh, coming at us. Amazon is also sinking a ton of money into an adaptation of Robert Jordan and Brandon Sanderson's The Wheel of Time, which we've talked about before on this. It is a very big fantasy series. Began, I think, in like the, I think, like literally 1990, finished in like 2013 or something, or 2014, after their first author died and they're going to take over for him. Yeah. Um, like huge, epic, 14 books long, like seven good ones. Um, and just uh, has never really gotten an adaptation, even though it is hugely successful among fantasy fans. It just mm-hmm. never happened. Probably because, like, again, like Game of Thrones sort of laid the groundwork, the groundwork for these kinds of shows to happen. Like before, you 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 just didn't think that big. Like yeah. you didn't think it would be worth adapting a fourteen book fantasy series, yeah. or something like the Sandman we were talking about. Like that comic book series is too visually <laughs> ambitious and just oh, wow. yeah. psychotropically weird most producers would go we're not going to risk it but with game of thrones <laughs> which proved you could have like this giant sweeping eight season epic with dozens of characters and huge special effects like the doors are open for oh, yeah. these kinds of shows which is good um I, I, I although i wonder if if we can sustain like several of these on the air at the time anyway I, I'm talking a lot this episode. Next week will be more <laughs> focused on stuff you 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 like. I swear to God. Oh gosh, um, yeah. Well, I, I let you, I like when you talk about fantasy because it kind of it gets me into this realm as well. I I learn yeah. more about it. <laughs> Lovely, good. Thank God. Um, so anyway, Amazon released some shots of the Wheel of Time, which is vaguely about you know a group of young adventurers who go off on an adventure and find they're all super special chosen one people who must defeat a dark lord it's pretty like kind of straightforward at least in the broad strokes it, it's very lord of the rings like in some ways but um obviously there's a lot of detail there because there were 14 books we got this shot of i i'm gonna guess that is the main character 
Rand and his buddy Matt mm-hmm. is a part in the first book where they're kind of on their own individual journey and they're going along. Uh, this is all concept art, by the way. This isn't like actual shot shots, but it looks good. Oh, yeah. We got, I'm pretty sure this is the starting town. Every epic adventure has to have a starting town <laughs> right. where the heroes live and it's nice and quiet. Yeah. And then, like, you know, adventure comes calm. They walk off. Yeah. Frodo and the I Shire. Like yeah, this is, um, I've got, uh, Emmons Field. That's where they live. And this is the haunted city of Shadar Logoth. I'm pretty sure, anyway. That's got to be what it is. Where they uh, have a horrible run in with some nasties about partway through the first book. I mean, so, it looks good. Yeah. This is interesting to me because I always so, associate fantasy with like medieval times. And in that last picture, oh, yeah. we have kind of like, you know, London like buildings, maybe Victorian sort of buildings. So this is this isn't like super super far in the past. I mean, it is. It's or definitely theory. fantasy. Uh-huh. But um, I, it, the Wheel of Time is a little different because it's more like Renaissance times, I guess okay. I would say. Like there's gunpowder involved. I guess there are fireworks involved in Lord of the Rings too. Um, and there's like a lot of different cities they go to and cultures they experience. It draws from kind of Eastern influences, Western influences. It draws from a lot of different stuff. It is sparahalling. <laughs> like he has a lot of stuff to say and he wants to say it all. It, 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 it's a little later, but I mean, we're, we're still talking swords and bows and stuff here. Okay. Like it's not like it's future tech. <laughs> right. Yeah. Okay. Well, yeah, those were some great pictures. Got me a good. little more I mean, interested. Yeah. Well, the, the, so our last question for, for you and the whole group out there, if we have like house of the dragon, a mm-hmm. big fantasy about, you know, the Targaryens fighting each other on Dragonback, the Lord of the Rings show about taking down Sauron with the Rings of Power, and there's hobbits and there's dwarves and all that crap, and the Wheel of Time, a big kind of Renaissance era medieval fantasy thing about, you know, people taking on the Dark Lord, kind of like Lord of the Rings. Is that too many billion dollar fantasy shows on at once? Like, can we really give our bandwidth over to this stuff? <laughs> Ooh. Um, I. I can't say for certain, you know, all of them are going to come out. I and I don't want to be biased because we're... Oh, they'll know, come friends. out. Yeah. Or I mean, like on top, you know, which one is going to come out yeah, on oh, top? Yeah, are any going to sink? I, I have more faith in the Game of Thrones just because to me, it seems like Game of Thrones was able to, able to capture a broader audience in the yeah. sense that if they got me to watch, you know, they might continue that with House of the Dragon. The other two... I don't know. I'm thinking about like The Witcher, you know, one of the other follow-up fantasy shows. It got a pretty broad audience. I don't know, it but the, re- the reception though wasn't just as wild as Game of Thrones. I, I wonder no, it if not. it will, at least for the other two, Will of Time and Lord of the Rings, if it'll kind of just flatline, maybe get a lot of views. Because at the end of the day, it's kind of, you know, what these streaming services care about. Like, hey, as long as we get the views, we get the revenue. Oh, yeah. It's like, all right, we did our job. I mean, <laughs> Not even views. It's like if Am- if you like if these shows get people to buy merch on Amazon, they've done their job. <laughs> the economics yeah. are so new and fascinating. Like TV shows don't pay for themselves with commercials anymore. That <laughs> era is like yeah, did decades in the past. Now, now it's for like Amazon. It, it literally is like did do, do you subscribe monthly to Amazon Prime Video and like if we send you affiliate links and you buy tchotchkes while watching the show, like if there are enough tchotchkes bought, the show pays for itself. I find that really interesting. Just the way the economics work now that it's more yeah. subscription driven or for house of the dragon, it'll be all about HBO max subscriptions. True. Yep. Um, yep, yep. And I mean, HBO still technically exists as a channel, but it's, I feel like it's going to get more and more full to HBO max as time yeah. goes on. Um, and as folks are saying here, they are looking forward to will of time. Ooh, Jackie says, not too many shows, same time. Nothing on. There's nothing on to watch these days. Now, I kind of disagree with that. Really? There's so much on to watch these days. <laughs> it's, at least it felt like that for a while. I mean, we're about to talk about what we're watching right now. I feel like there is a lot to watch. I will say there's not much like on the magnitude that they're really aiming for. Like Game of Thrones is the most expensive show in history. And Amazon is saying like, hold my beer, essentially. And they're trying <laughs> to one up that not once, but twice. Like that is going to be a new thing. You mentioned the Witcher. Like that to me is sort of like Game of Thrones on a budget, a bit of it. It's, 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 
it's a nice swing and i i enjoyed mm-hmm. it but it was sort of like um it had like a very um late 90s daytime xena hercules <laughs> fantasy vibe to it yeah i sort of i i know what you're going with there <laughs> they did what they could with the money yeah and it, it, and it was fun i liked it but um these will be the real proving ground because if these succeed i mean we have the 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 fantasy, the fantasy renaissance goes on if they fail mm-hmm. We'll, we'll, we'll find something else. The industry yeah. will go on to the next thing. Yeah. Ooh, and Jackie says, after Vikings, I'm searching for fantasy or sci-fi. Well, Jackie, we're going to talk about stuff we watch right now, so maybe we'll get some recommendations for you. Mm-hmm. And if any of you out there are watching anything you'd like to share, feel free to hit us up. We can talk about it. And okay, Mia, um, as we're our last segment, what are you watching? What am I watching? Right now, I'm looking at I don't, I'm so distracted right now by this like golden like sunset what is going hour on? coming into my room. <laughs> it's like is your so window nice right and, there. Yeah, you. It would be too bright if I showed you all, but it's really just imagine a nice, warm, and magical. Anyway, <laughs> what I've been watching on TV recently is uh, I think we came here to talk about WandaVision, which released the first two episodes last Friday, which was we got to nice discuss WandaVision treat. a bit. Yeah, I mean. <laughs> You talked about it last week. Uh huh. Just a little. I, I, you know, skirted over the details and all that. Very cool. So this is the Wandavision, the very first ever uh, Marvel Cinematic Universe television show on Disney Plus. Um, I'll just say up front, I really liked it. Um, mm-hmm. I was kind of, I, I genuinely enjoyed some of like the. So the, the whole thing is. Wanda and Vision, two fairly minor characters from the MCU, are married and somehow living in a sitcom universe, and we don't know mm-hmm. why or how. And like they went there. Like those first two episodes were episodes that could have been on television in like the 50s or 60s. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but like incorporating the fact that they're superheroes. And with an undercurrent of, you know, something's not right from the mm-hmm. jump because why is this happening at all? Yeah. Um, and I really liked it. I thought the old timey sort of sitcom filmmaking was charming. I thought some of the jokes were, you know, they were corny, but like with an earnestness, like yeah. they actually are trying to be good, not like in a wink, wink, that's so lame, we can laugh at it sort of way. Mm -hmm. Um, which I thought was really endearing. And I thought the kind of more, the darker moments of what is going on here, something's clearly wrong, were pretty effective. Yeah. And mostly I I just, I just loved how different it was from the rest of the MCU. I mean, obviously there's nothing else even remotely like this (laughs) in the MCU and not much like it um, really in superheroes on Disney+. Plus. I mean, it's it's shockingly avant-garde for Disney to yeah. do this. Yeah. Which right there, they have my respect. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'm glad I could talk about a little more of the details now. I absolutely loved, and I didn't know I would have so much love or have, you know, be charmed by their attempt, you know, to kind of replicate those old time, like, I guess growing up, I was watching TV with my grandma. So like, we would always watch I Dream of Jeannie and Bewitched. <laughs> And so it was like those two shows specifically, right? You've got the married couple and the woman is kind of like magical, but it's secret right. and all of that. So they had a really nice kind of platform or base to build off of. And yeah, it it to me was really just like a kind of cut and copy of those shows, still in a funny original way. Mm-hmm. Um and it was like, oh my gosh, these, like the plots that they got into, like, oh no, you know, I, my, you know, boss is coming Where over is for it? dinner, yeah. but my wife thinks, you know, it's, it's like, oh, it's those a- plots used to drive me crazy. And I was like, no, no, no. Um, so yeah, I, I really love that. And yet it really, um, okay. Yeah. <laughs> I was trying to like avoid a spoiler, but for next week, I mean, we but just say, it, okay, I spoiler almost, alert. Yeah. I almost like forgot I was watching an M- MCU show or an MCU totally. piece of content up until some some point in the third episode. 
Um, and the first and first and second episode, of course, you kind of know this is WandaVision, but as you kind of just watch it and it goes on, you're like, oh, but this just feels like its own separate thing. And it, you know, it almost feels as if it has no connection to the MCU, which I, you know, I didn't mind, but they will be building up that mystery as it seems. I'm almost disappointed in that because I really am enjoying the disconnection and just kind of enjoying the, 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 the intimacy yeah. of it and just how focused it is on A, loving television of yesteryear and B, sort of Wanda's personal experience or whatever it is she's going through. Almost yeah. has like some horror elements. It's just, it's also different and it's also <laughs> different. I just love how different it is exactly. and how entertaining it is. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it a lot. And you it looks like the commenters agree I lose a different Dutch references. Yeah, I can't, I can't, can't work with that. As Julie says, oh, there's nothing on here at the moment that gives me a feeling of I can't miss it. You know what I mean? I do. Mm-hmm. Although WandaVision is really uh, appealing to me right now. I, I am looking forward to seeing what comes next on that. I'm watching yeah. The Stand. I continue to watch that on CBS All Access. And it's, 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 it's good. It's good. It's, it's good. <laughs> it's it's about along. all it's really given me is solid, good, nice um it's not really smacking me in the face with how great it is but i can deal with solid good nice as you said vikings just ended um the last kingdom was coming back is there anything else you're watching mia i i don't think there's anything new i watched this week i've been trying to play through super mario odyssey (laughs) which that's like a whole a whole nother thing and i picked up knitting of all things last weekend (laughs) so i've been my time has kind of been like divided between that so i haven't watched anything new yet besides wandavision let me ask you this so you seen the third episode Uh do they get into like what are so you don't have to spoil it but like what are the sitcom references for uh, the 70s one? Is it like All in the um, Family or the Jeffersons or something? I think the biggest one is the Brady Bunch. I think oh, of course, the Brady that's Bunch. That's like the that's like the one that they try to do. That makes, of course, that makes yeah. perfect sense. I, I wouldn't, you know, I don't, yeah, I think, I think that's it. I don't know if there's really anything else. If not, you know, I'd love to see what the fans have to say when they watch it. Oh, and that's coming out in like two days anyway. Wow. How yeah, very flies. nice. I like going to it. <laughs> Yeah, I was a little worried. This would be like my last comment about that. I would. I wonder if Disney deliberately put those two out because they were kind of similar. Um, yeah, and I wonder were. if people would have complained more if they had to wait until Friday to watch episode two and be like, "Wow, we just got the same episode, but you know, different circumstances." So, um, yeah, three Disney's will- crafty. Yeah. Disney's a three- thinker three will be a little different um <laughs> and we'll see we'll know we'll see what that's that. like this week yeah i'm looking forward to it a lot otherwise Mia, any other thoughts you have before we sign off for the week on programs books culture the world anything oh gosh no i just found out when i just found out that there's another star wars book coming out on february the 2nd i thought it, i had a oh. lot more time so i'm i'm gonna be like up to the neck in, in star wars books so that's gonna be my oh life. yeah now that they've begun um they're not gonna stop ever oh no <laughs> like i hope we all know that yeah yeah please wish me luck all right and for all you guys watching thanks for coming to us thanks for watching take the black live we're here every wednesday on uh, the Winners Coming Facebook page at 4 p.m. Central Standard Time and on the Winners Coming YouTube channel. Um, we're also available on podcast form, as I said, wherever podcasts are available. iTunes, Google Play, such as this. And we will see you right here next week, uh, Wednesday, 4 p.m. CST. Bye, everybody, and have a lovely rest of your week and weekend. Bye.